Hi, everybody. Um, thanks for joining this webinar. I think we've got a relatively short and simple one today, but a pretty um, important and highly requested feature throughout the WKO4 life, and that's the integration of Training Peaks daily metrics and into WKO5 and the automatic sync of those. So I'm going to show you a few different ways to enter those in Training Peaks, um, give you an overview of just what options are available. We won't dive into um, exactly what a lot of them mean or how to use them or any of the methodology or science behind any of them. This is strictly a easiest and fastest ways to enter them in Training Peaks and then start using them in WKO5 as well. Uh, before we get started, just everybody should be automatically set to be muted. Um, if you're not, just double check and take a look and mute yourself um, so we don't get weird feedback things going on. And then feel free to type any questions in the chat box in the GoToWebinar panel. I'll try and keep track of them as we go. Um, if I lose track, then I'll just check them all at the end. Again, it should be pretty short, so it shouldn't be hard to revisit any of those questions as we go. So I'll demo most of these as well, but I have a few slides just kind of go over uh, what we're going to talk about. So for the most part, entering metrics in Training Peaks, there's three ways to do that. Kind of, yeah, I'll call it three ways, two manual ways and one automatic way. You can manually enter the metrics in Training Peaks on the web app. So with your computer and a full browser on the calendar, and I'll show that in a few minutes here. You can manually enter them on the mobile app, which um, some athletes and you may prefer as well, or you can automatically sync those metrics from third parties. Depending on what metrics you're tracking, you or your athletes are tracking, how many of them you're tracking them, why you're tracking them, you'll probably use a combination of these, even though you might have one um, kind of preferred one to get most of your metrics in. And just to give you a quick overview of the available metrics, these are things like, just so you know what we're talking about, um, there's a lot of subjective metrics, things like motivation, soreness, overall feeling, stress, and several others. Um, health, general health metrics, injury, um, sickness, sleep duration and quality, urine color, many others. Body composition metrics that we're pretty familiar with. This is one of the the few sets body weight was one of the few things that WKO4 could do and now we've added all the rest of the important body composition metrics so weight body fat percentage body water muscle mass uh, lean mass etc some recovery metrics resting heart rate in training peaks we call that pulse for various reasons so if you're looking for a place to enter your morning resting heart rate value in training peaks look for pulse we don't call it resting heart rate or rhr and then hrv hrv has just exploded in popularity and use and application recently um, and so now hrv values that are entered in training peaks synced wko5 and people have already started coming up with some really interesting charts for tracking that and correlating it with training load and some of the other metrics that also is a little bit named a little bit differently. So if you're going to start using that in WKO5, that the expression for that is actually HRV score and not HRV. And then menstruation and some apps that track that as well. Um, so in addition to the manual entries on the mobile or the web app, one way, the, the other way you can get metrics into training peaks that's become a lot more common recently is uh, automatic metric sync from third-party services and apps. So HRV for training, uh, um, Elite HRV, Sweetbeat, and iFleet all do are all uh, free or cheap mobile apps that let you record HRV in the morning. Many of them are starting to add other metrics that will sync as well. So for an example, HRV for training, you could take an HRV reading in the morning. It also records your resting heart rate, and then it it prompts you with a questionnaire about your mood, your motivation, your feeling, your soreness. You enter all of those, and all of those can sync to Training Peaks automatically. 
I threw an OR ring. Some of you may have started using an OR ring or are familiar with an OR ring. There's not a direct sync from the OR ring. It's a ring that you wear that tracks HRV and sleep quality and a lot of other health metrics as well. But that can sync through HRV for training to Training Peaks Now. So if that's a device you've been interested in or are using, that is also compatible with Training Peaks Now. Um, MFIT is a device that goes under your mattress that traps sleep quality in HRV. Um, Fitbit scales. Fitbit has a couple of scales that now will sync directly to Training Peaks. The new Whoop band that a lot of people are using for quantifying recovery and readiness, their sync to Training Peaks is in beta and should be going fully live in the next few weeks or month or so. Um, Garmin Health right now, um, that's limited to metrics captured by their scale. So body composition stuff can be synced to Training Peaks automatically. And then Fitter Woman is a mobile app that uh, tracks menstruation cycles specifically for endurance athletes. They're working on a sync that should go out sometime this year. This is just a brief list to show you that there's a lot of apps that can record metrics and then sync them to Training Peaks automatically. So you don't have to enter them manually, rely on your athletes to enter them manually. This is um, one I won't show live because it's pretty simple and it's more work than it's worth to set up a mobile app screen sharing. But you can also easily enter, you or your athletes can easily enter metrics in the Training Peaks mobile app. This is in the Android version, the iOS version should look fairly similar with the pinwheel um, plus button at the bottom, the same way you would add a workout or add an event or add anything to your Training Peaks calendar on the mobile app. There's a metrics option and that would let you enter um, all of these metrics the same way as the web app. And then we aren't to the Q&A section yet, but I'll just show you that um, you'll have a copy of this slideshow with all of these links in here. Um, with a link to an article on how to manually enter metrics in TP. So if this, um, the rest of this webinar doesn't answer all your questions, you can refer back to this. I have a complete list of all of the available health metrics in Training Peaks. There's a few dozen more that I didn't mention. So if you want to see everything that you could track that's available, and then also an article on how to set up the Garmin Health Scale Sync. So those are some useful things you may want to come back to. For right now, we'll just do a quick demonstration of this. So in the Training Peaks web app, you can see here this kind of gray box. Hopefully everybody can see my mouse, but if you look at Tuesday the 6th, this is today, the gray box with the dial. You see HRV at the top. This is a metrics box. It looks kind of similar to a workout. It's just another item that can be entered on the calendar. It shows the top one and then it shows nine more. So this is a metric that was automatically synced from the HRV app I used this morning. If you wanted to enter a metric, a new metric manually, when you hover over, you see this plus appear on the calendar. Click on that. You see all the workout types you can enter. This should be pretty familiar. And then down here, you see metrics. You'd enter that, you'd see the list of metrics that you have chosen to view so far. So you may only see two of these on your version. You can add as many as you want. Um, I'll show you how to do that in a second. But you've added this box, and now you can enter um, all of these metrics manually if you want. I'm not going to, I'm gonna show you another option. What I end up doing is I track the majority of my metrics through an automatic app sync from in an HRV app, but then it doesn't track my weight. And so I always want to add weight later manually. You can also open an existing metrics item. So here you can see everything that's synced automatically from my app, but it didn't track weight because it's just my phone. I'm going to enter my weight for the day and save. And now you can see that is updated there and those are all ready to go. I'll mention one thing really quick. Some people can't find their metrics on their calendar or their athletes' calendars at all. There is this, let me move something out of the way here. There is this menu option up here in the upper corner of the Training Peaks calendar. And you'll see show on calendar, workouts, nutrition, metrics, summary. 
sometimes you may have unchecked the metrics box and then none of your metrics will actually show on the calendar even though all the data is still there so if you can't find metrics or all of your workouts have disappeared check up here and make sure that these boxes are checked first if you want to actually see them on your calendar so now that all of these actually let me show you one more thing because you may again only see weight and pulse up here on training peaks if you want to add more options there's a gear icon in the upper right corner of this metrics entry box if you click on that it'll open a little bit slowly your layout view your layout settings and you can scroll down to the metrics section here's another place where you can see the entire list of available metrics there's two columns available and in use so you can see i've chosen hrv weight percent fat etc and if for some reason I wanted to start track, tracking, um, what's a good one? I'll do my hydration level. I can just take that and drag it over. And now that will be an available entry box on my metrics options. Um, you can also rearrange the order. So if you always want to see HRV first and then pulse, you can change those here as well. This affects the order in training peaks. Um, and not WKO. So once you have this all configured the way that you want, and you can, you or your athletes can start entering metrics consistently, all of these will automatically start syncing to WKO5. So under the athlete details, you'll see a list of any metric, um, metrics are combined with thresholds in uh, WKO5, so it would be kind of a long list for some of you, but any metric that you have ever entered will show here. So for instance, here's my HRV. I, you can see the list of dates where they've been automatically synced from training peaks, what the value was, and a little preview graph. And you'll see some, like I said, every metric you have ever entered. I think for a while I was experimenting with tracking stress in 2011, but then I stopped and tried one more time in 2017. So those are still here in this list. Um, you can't currently get rid of those easily, but you can go back to these dates and training peaks and delete them there and then resync and they'll go away. But just in case you see random metrics and you're not sure where they're coming from, it'll show any that you've ever tried even once. But you can see all the others, fatigue, HRV, injury, percent fat. And so the combination of having them in WKO and the flexibility of creating customized charts and reports here plus the ease of getting them here with automatic syncs from Garmin Health or mobile apps should make it a lot easier. You should see a lot of potential here for correlating the training load metrics we've always been tracking in WKO with subjective things like mood. There's been a lot of research recently on um, mood being a good predictor of future injury overtraining, plus some more objective recovery metrics like HRV. And so then as soon as these are here, you can start leveraging them in customized charts. So for instance, I have started building kind of an experimental recovery dashboard. This top panel is showing my daily HRV score um, plus rolling seven and 30 day averages for HRV. This bottom chart is uh, the same thing, but for heart rate. And then over on this side, I have kind of a go, no go for HRV and heart rate and mood. So I wanted to add a subjective piece to that to show that. So a lot of potential here um, and relatively easy to get all of that data in all of the places you want it, either for yourself or from all of your athletes. Um, and with that, I think that's about it for the overview of entering metrics and training peaks and getting them into WKO. Like I said, this was a pretty short and easy one, but a lot of potential and a lot of possibilities. I'm sure um, somebody, Tim or I, or somebody else will have a lot of um, more materials and reports in the future about specific use cases for some of these metrics and some advanced charts are gonna be appearing pretty soon, I would imagine. So let me see if there's any 
questions on any of that? I'll go back to the slide just so you can see in what um, other resources are available for reviewing available metrics and how to enter them. So far, no written questions. So hopefully that was, that's because it was simple and everybody's ready to start using that and not because I did a bad job of explaining it. Um, so that's all I have, unless there's anything else from Debbie is around. I think you covered it great. All right. Um, I'm, I didn't put this on the slide. Um, if anybody has any questions about this, I'm easy to reach at Training Peaks. C. Stevenson with a PH at trainingpeaks.com or any submit a question to our support team. Um, they know as much as I do, and I sit right next to them so they can find me as well, too. Uh, oh, we have one question. Is this presentation recorded? And it is. It'll be recorded and it should be available um, in the future. And I believe most of these get put up on the Facebook group, the WKO Power Users Facebook group. Is that correct, uh, yes. Debbie? Yes, I will put a link in the Facebook group. Great. All right, well, thank you very much, Cody. I appreciate it. Thanks.